Hi, my name is Robert Bennett. I am a film and TV composer and also a graduate of Indiana University Jacobs School of Music in 1999, um, a composition, and I was also an associate instructor of music theory there at the time. I have scored feature films, video games, TV shows, TV commercials, movie trailers. Most of what I do lately is movie trailers. Um, I, own, I co-own a publishing company with Warner Chapel Music that distributes a catalog of music to movie trailers, but also just generally out to anybody who needs um, content for sync with multimedia. And um, this is a little of my story. I was born in Indiana, so I'm a Hoosier through and through in that sense. And I taught myself guitar, pretty much self-cut guitar. And since I was a child in the 80s, I was soon playing in heavy metal bands and having a lot of fun doing that through high school. I decided to go to Berklee College of Music in Boston when I got out of high school and not really having, not really even knowing what it was that I wanted to pursue musically. A good part of me was just assuming I would meet the right bandmates and become a rock star, uh, which um, pr probably might be, might be best that it didn't happen, but I did end up falling in love with composition and film scoring. And so I ended up enrolling in a dual major at Berkeley, which was film scoring and composition. Those years at Berkeley and Boston were for me a period of intense study. I really, my high school didn't have a strong music program. So I noticed early on that I was kind of lacked some of the musical training that a lot of my colleagues had. And so I was incredibly driven to catch up with them um, and hopefully surpass them. I, I, was, I was incredibly driven to, I realized I didn't have as much knowledge and I really was wanted to kind of be at the top of the class. And so I just put in endless hours at it, so much so that I don't know nearly anything about the city of Boston. Having lived there for four years, I know the library, the practice rooms, and the conservatory venues where I'd go see concerts. I came into it thinking that a large part of the composition was just kind of inspiration and you were born with a certain innate talents. But I quickly realized that there's um, a craft underneath that in composition that is essential to kind of understanding how music works and how the pieces fit together and how to build things and what have people done before and then how can you rethink that and so I kind of fell in love with the craft and also ultimately I fell in love with the composition side more so than the film scoring side so from there I decided I I, I was just interested in continuing to write for the concert stage and so I assumed I just needed to go get a graduate degree and try to get um, tenure somewhere at a college perhaps teaching while I wrote more crazy orchestral music. I, so doing that, getting to the end of my time at Boston, I applied to a bunch of, well, a few very prestigious schools and didn't get into any of them. I was pretty crushed. And um, I think, well, I know that coming from Berkeley, I was even told by some of the feedback from the colleges I applied to that, I was basically, I was kind of applying to conservatories coming from kind of a jazz and pop rock school. And that came with a little bit of baggage, I think. I had a year before I was gonna try again to reapply. Um, and that time I studied with David Zubay. During the summer, I was able to get into a summer program there at IU. And I also signed up for the year I was missing. I signed up at Berkeley College of Music to do their exchange program and do an extra year in Rotterdam, Holland. Fantastic experience, came back. I also kind of like got a little bit of a conservatory, got the conservatory credits into my name and then came back and reapplied. And, um, and at that point got into the Indiana University program. Uh, I was also in love with music theory at that time. And so it was, it was I, you know, I applied to become an associate instructor and was um, brought on to do so. What fantastic experience, I enjoyed it so much. And I can't stress enough again, how important it is to really um, have a uh, have a really great grip on theory as a composer. It's it just kind of provides you with so many tools that anyone who hasn't 
put some time in kind of deconstructing music is, um, is it, 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 you kind of lack a whole skill set that comes with having just understanding the, understanding the nuts and bolts of how music is put together. So that was a, another fantastic period there at IU of studying. Um, uh, Don Freund, Sam Adler was a teacher there at the time as well, visiting and uh, just um, a really good experience for me. Leaving there, well, I should say during my summers in grad school there, I had one friend from Boston who had went straight to LA uh, to just go straight into, try to dive straight into film scoring. He needed help on a film on my first summer after my first year of grad school. I had the summer free. I went out, helped him on his picture. It was a lot of fun. The weather was nice. I borrowed a surfboard and um, after, and I, then I did the same thing again the next year. The next summer I came out and helped him again. And after, at, at the end of that point, I realized that I, I, it was something I wanted to pursue. I wanted to try it out. It was, it, I, was, I was making a little bit of money doing it. I was getting to record um, string ensembles and participating in the music scene was just, it's a really exciting thing to be a part of there. And it put all kind of a lot of my composition skills, the things that I'd studied as far as orchestration and conducting. I was conducting some of the sessions as well we were working on. So putting all that to use was very exciting. So I decided to give it a shot. And at the end of 1999, when I finished my master's degree, I moved to LA. I had applied for a Fulbright grant and a German DAAD grant, kind of the German counterpart to the American Fulbright grant. And having heard that I didn't get the Fulbright grant, I kind of took that as the, I took that as kind of a sign that my inclination to go to LA was the right, was the right thing. Moved to LA, immediately found out that I got the DAAD grant, was hesitant to take it, but um, my parents talked me into taking it. It was a you know, free ride to another conservatory in Germany for a year and they basically, you know, basically it's like, look, how can you pass this up? And who knows what can come of this? You'll meet new people, you'll have a chance to study. LA isn't going anywhere. So I went there and ultimately it was, it had kind of a profound impact on my film scoring career because I had already been, I minored in German at Indiana University and being in, studied in Cologne then for that one year and having learned German, by the time I got back to LA, I quickly through colleagues, um, you know, some other students from Boston who had moved out who might have known. I was put in touch with the composer who put me in touch with the composer Hans Zimmer. And I was able to go and interview for an assistantship he had coming available. And we were able to do the whole thing in German, which I uh, definitely would not have been able to do if I hadn't taken that DAAD grant to go study for a year in Germany. And I got the job, probably undeservedly so, because I, he, my, he didn't necessarily need somebody with the conservatory orchestral background as myself. He needed uh, someone who had a music engineering background and music synthesis background. But I managed to swim my way through his assistantship for a while and it's a fascinating experience and something that I can't, um, I can't, can't stress enough how important it is to, to, how important and valuable it is to try to get an assistantship once you get out of college and to just kind of get some hands on the ground experience from someone that's doing the thing that you wanna do. There's so many reasons for why that's useful because outside of the just pure academic world of composing music, there's so many things to learn about um, how, to, how to collaborate with people, how to collaborate with a director, how to learn the terminology that you guys use. How do you showcase your music? How do you get somebody to, how do you win somebody over into your vision of how uh, a collaborative project might might go, I want it to go this way, he wants it to go that way. How do you kind of sell them on your idea? So all these little things that are the nuances of relationships between collaborators is something that's really hard to learn until you see it happening in front of you. Besides that, getting assistantships, you're a lot of the people that the person you may be assisting for, projects that he's doing, their counterparts, the director has assistance. So you get to know the assistants of the person that your composer is working for. And those people are gonna be doing, getting projects of their own in a few years. And so you're building relationships with people. It's important to just always, I, I tell people kind of once you're out there, just be cool, be nice, make friends, because ultimately 
especially in this enormous city like Los Angeles, so many people try to do the same thing. It's projects kind of come and go and being a freelance composer in Los Angeles, it, there's a lot of feast or famine, but all, a lot of the times these projects are monumental tasks, scoring a feature film, writing an hour and a half of music or scoring a video game that has tons of music. And often it's a whole teams of composers and music editors and orchestrators, et cetera, et cetera. They get a job off one person getting the job and that one person can pass work to all kinds of people. So as my, in my time in LA, I've worked on just countless projects as part of a team, part of teams of other people, people who were friends of mine, people who worked with Hans Zimmer studio with me, people, whom I met just through friends of friends from hanging out at events in LA, from um, other social circles that ran in. My, my, once I left Hans Zimmer's studio and I first started to get, well, tried to find work for myself, my own freelance composing work, people looking for me to be a composer and score their project. The first things I really got into were TV commercials. And that happened because I, and this is to bring it back to Indiana University again, I went to watch the Indiana University Hoosier basketball team uh, play in the 2001 March Madness. And in Santa Monica at a sports bar, I met another, there was another group of people sitting across the bar and one of them turned out to be a composer, an in-house composer who had studied at IU and was working in-house at a TV at a commercial ad agency writing music for TV commercials. And so we, we immediately went up and high-fived and then he became one of my best friends and still is to this day. And he immediately introduced me to the company he worked for. Suddenly I was scoring TV commercials. And then from that point, once I had, I mean, I had Hans Zimmer's name to draw. I, and I had, and then at that point I had a couple of TV commercials I'd scored. So from there, it was taking that those TV commercials to every other TV ag commercial agency that I could find in LA and giving my reel and dropping Hans's name or whatever other person you might've worked for to try to get your foot in the door. It's all using whatever things you can to get somebody to read your email instead of hit the delete button. So I would always put from assistant to Hans Zimmer, even though I wasn't his assistant anymore, but I would say that then in the next thing. People think, oh, they're getting a message from this Hans Zimmer. Well, a former assistant. They would read that, that would get my email read. Then I, so then I was able to show my reel to people. That started getting me lots of other um, freelance scoring work in the TV advertising world. Meanwhile, other friends from a couple of years go by, I've also put in touch with someone who's doing uh, movie trailer, uh, original scores for movie trailers and also has a movie trailer library. And he was looking for something that had a lot of orchestral experience. And, and one might be surprised at how many film composers in Los Angeles don't have a lot of orchestral training. Um, and um, so it, it, the, it brings, you bring a lot to the table coming with that because the other crucial part of it is understanding music production because you can be the most talented composer, but if the piece of music you generate and hand to a client doesn't sound amazing, it's, it's going to lose, you're, you're going to lose the job. So it really doesn't matter whether you've written the most um, amazing melody that's uh, ever been cranked out. If it doesn't sound really compelling, then if it's, if it sounds low budget and trashy, then they're not gonna hire you. You can get a lot further with a C major chord sustaining for one minute that sounds, it's produced to the heavens than with the most, you know, with a fugue, <laughs> with an amazing fugue. So, so music production is so crucial to, to getting jobs in Los Angeles, knowing how to make your music really work well. And a lot of that is, um, there's so much online to be able to learn, to learn about music production outside of academic world, academic world and also, just again, from getting an assistantship and watching somebody do it, watching someone produce their music to make it sound good. So back to my early freelance days, other composers who I had befriended while at the assistantship to Hans Zimmer, they were getting jobs as well. And some of them started getting um, video game work. We, so I was kind of brought in as the orchestral guy to help, again, as part of a team of composers doing these jobs, which are just huge undertakings. Spider-Man 3 video game, The Matrix Path of Neo video game, 
There's a couple of them. Meanwhile, other houses, I was music houses that were mostly TV commercial music houses. They were taking on all kinds of projects and they really liked me as a writer. So I was writing on a Mike Judge TV show for a while that they were kind of coordinating amidst, a, again, a team of writers. This stuff kind of continued. I, through friends of friends, met various directors and scored movies, various movies. I, collab I, I contributed additional music to other movies like Wrong Turn 2 for Fox. Just again, by participating in the film scoring community out there, making friends and, um, and just again, being cool. People wanna work with people that, they, that are they're their friends. You know, they wanna work with a-holes. They wanna work with people that are just fun to hang out with, right? So if you know what you're doing and, um, and you're cool, then people are, may bring you along for the ride when something lands on their, on their lap. And so it's important to really just have a great attitude along the way. So, so important. From there, and that's, that's getting up closer to now, um, I eventually now live in Nashville, but I spent nearly 20 years in LA. And near, in the last few years, I ended up via all of these um, work at commercial music ad houses and trailer music libraries, I ended up being sought out as a partner in a trailer music catalog. And that was with Warner Chapel Music Group. And just because I'd had plenty of success scoring and getting music placed into uh, movie trailers, then that kind of led them to want to use my knowledge I've gained and also my credits to kind of build a new catalog. So that's kind of where, are, where we are now. I own a catalog called Glory Open Blood. We license music into all kinds of movie trailers and also do some original scoring. Writing music for trailers is a really fun, um, fun area of film scoring. It's it's uh, it, because of kind of the epic nature of so much of it, you get to just use all of the, every, there, no, nothing is off limits in the movie trailer world because they often it's just a wall of sound with drums and orchestra and synths and so many other components happening. So it's been really fun. And I, I with my orchestral background, was able to, they also, via this partnership with Warner Chapel, we are able to, um, they're able to invest money in our albums and so we're able to go to places like Abbey Road and Air Studios in London and all over the world for that matter, whether it's in Budapest or here in Nashville um, and record albums, work with orchestras, and which is just kind of what it's all about for me. It's, I couldn't be more happier doing those kinds of things and so it's been a fantastic experience and a, just trying to uh, keep it going.